Clinton emails about Libya are the subject of a New York Times story today digging into a string of memos between the former Secretary of State and her close friend and former aide Sidney Blumenthal who apparently was representing private contractors seeking work in post-Qaddafi Libya at the time. Yet another lie Hillary Clinton has been allegedly caught in. Another connection between the Clinton Foundation and alleged sneaky financial dealings is being tossed about. And another slap at those who've been waiting patiently in line to become American citizens. All just part of another edition of The Arena. So let's get to work. Our first guest is a multiple New York Times bestselling author and a columnist at Newsday. But of course, top of his resume, to me at least, being the voice of Stormy on the Cartoon Network Sea Lab 2021. Come on, we got to get the important stuff in here. Ellis Hennigan joins us. Thank you. You're welcome, of course. Thank you. Joined by veteran radio and TV sportscaster, journalist, producer. All of those titles means he is just like everybody else in this industry with a lot of stops along the way. Pleasure to welcome Steve McPartland of the show. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Nice to be here. It's also an indication of a guy who can't hold down a job. <laughs> uh, Steve, <laughs> well, I... We all know that feeling, right? Look yeah. at that. All of a sudden, all three of us are sitting here right now like we just know what's going on. All all right. Now that we've told everybody our deep, intimate secrets about this business, uh, let's go ahead and dig into Hillary Clinton here. Ellis, to you first. Sidney Blumenthal is now right back at the core of everything with the Clintons at this point. Shady dealings again. The Clinton Foundation. Is this, here we go, the smoking gun that everybody has been looking for <laughs> to finally <laughs> nail the Clintons? Uh, Keep looking. First of all, let's agree that Sidney can be a jerk. I mean, those of us who know him uh, find him to be really smart, but also kind of irritating sometimes. That said, I constantly get emails from friends of mine who have opinions about all kinds of things. Sometimes I follow them to other friends when they have something interesting to say. I assume everybody has 12 agendas going on at the same time. Welcome to life in the real world. I don't understand who could possibly actually be offended by this. All right, Steve, you were shaking your head. Why? Well, I think the odd thing about this is exactly what motivated uh, him to reach out to the Secretary of State. Apparently, he was acting on information given to him by associates of his who apparently had some business interests in a post Gaddafi Libya. Well, boy, oh boy, doesn't this second. sound like something we've Wait heard before? Doesn't this sound Wait like what second. the left First has been all... accusing Dick Cheney of? For over a decade with Halliburton Ooh. and the entrance to Iraq. No, listen. It, All right, wait a minute. Go it's, ahead, Ellis. It's exactly, it's exactly the same to this extent. I, I mean, I would assume that, that Dick Cheney still communicates with people he worked with at Halliburton. Sidney Blumenthal has been a close aide and friend to Hillary Clinton for, I guess, two or three decades now. I mean, what is all this holier than thou stuff? I mean, don't you talk to people? Don't you get emails from your friends? No, no one likes me, Ellis. <laughs> and, and it's just how it is. But I think well, there's I, here, here's something else we weren't going to tell anybody. I, I think. I think is that that's a bigger uh, issue man when Ed brought this up to us when he when he posed this question to us what he was posing was is this the straw that breaks the camel's back is this the final one no. and I think that when you no. look at all I mean there is no shock that there could be a quid pro quo between a governmental official like a Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and a friend who is representing a business. There's no shock to it. It's just by denying it, saying it never exists, it's not there. Here's the shiny object, look somewhere else, don't look here. That's part of the problem. You got to admit, Ellis, come on, there, there's a little shakiness going on here. When you put everything together, eventually there's got to be some connections here. You got to find A to Z's dots somewhere, got to start connecting. Well, I know that's what the paranoics believe, but this is weak <laughs> tea, guys. What you've got is somebody who what, who has a client talking to a politician. If politicians didn't talk to people who have clients, they would sit in the office by themselves all day with no one to talk to other than mumbling to their aides. This is life. God, God, don't pretend to be shocked about it. All right. Well, I don't think anybody, let's put it this way. You're right about this, Ellis. I don't think anybody is shocked about this. Oh. So we'll need to move on here. Minute left, real quick. Okay. The World Trade Organization ruled against the U.S. on Monday in a years-long battle because the U.S. says you got to have country of origin labels required on the meat, the livestock coming, the livestock coming in from Canada and Mexico. Hey, Steve, I don't know. I mean, they say that the United States wants to keep meat from coming in elsewhere. The U.S. just says we want people to know they're getting the best. Well, I want to know where my meat has been. 
See, there you go. Without a question, I do. And I have absolutely no problem. I don't know why the World Trade Organization thinks it could prohibit delivering information, nutritional information, to the American public. I'm a meatist elitist. I think cows should be treated like thoroughbred racehorses. I want to know the entire lineage of the yeah, cow. Yeah, well, hopefully we're not getting anything sold in the stores from thoroughbred racehorses who failed to finish in, in the first three. There too That'll well. be another instance altogether. Mm -hmm. Hey, come on, Ellis. This sounds like something where people are just hammering away the United States. States. I mean, don't we? It, it sounds like a good idea for the United States to get involved in this. Uh, it is. I'm for labeling all things. By the way, let, let's put in that meat, not just where it comes from, but what kind of deadly chemicals are also being pumped in there, too. We ought to know everything. You've got to be in favor of labeling at all times, under all circumstances, including this one. You're absolutely right. I'm with all that as well. And by the way, right after the show's over, I think we're all going to go out and going to head for a cheeseburger someplace. Uh, but let's not tell all our yeah. vegan friends that might be a big problem. Uh, Ellis Hennigan, <laughs> Steve McFarland, stand by just a couple of minutes, gentlemen. We're going to come right back after this. And when we do, immigrants are applying to enter the United United States legally, and they are waiting longer than the illegals. That and much more when we continue on the arena. Let's get back to work. Multiple New York Times best-selling author, columnist at Newsday, Ellis Hennigan, and veteran radio and television sportscaster, journalist, producer, Steve McPartland. Gentlemen, let's get right to this. Illegal immigrants still seeking legal status under the president's executive actions. But the waiting list for those trying to get into the U.S. legally is now 4.4 million. That's 100,000 more than last year. Some have been there for more than 15 years, and they're still waiting. Ellis, haven't we gotten to the point where we have to make these people the priority at this point? It's not fair for them to wait behind the illegal current influx. Well, we ought to vastly increase the, all the, the quotas on that stuff, right? I mean, the answer in the end to illegal immigration isn't all your walls and your barbed wire and your arrests and all that stuff. It's legal immigration. Give us reasonable amount of immigrants to satisfy the needs in America, and we won't need to have illegal people because the legal ones will get all the jobs. But don't get we busy need, on that, why don't you? But don't we need first, and Steve, to go back to the people who have been waiting. Let's deal with them first. Anybody else who comes later. Come on, there's a list here. In people waiting 15 years. They deserve Absolutely. first shot. And you're 100% right here as far as I'm concerned. I know that nobody ever guarantees anybody that life is fair, but we have to proceed in, in this world as to be fair arbiters. And if you have done everything right, if you've filled out all the forms, if you've waited patiently, if you've gone to school here, if you've paid your taxes, you really should be the ones who are expedited towards citizenship, not people who came here illegally, had an anchor child, and because that anchor child is a citizen, and now the parents are being pushed up the list towards citizenship. That's just not fair. It's not how it should be. Ellis, you agree with that? Why is anybody waiting 15 years? I mean, just raise the quotas and say yes to the people. That's the answer. I it think isn't there's a, to I think try and one hardworking immigrant and another hardworking immigrant. Let them all in. I think it's also a manpower situation. I don't think we have enough. And believe we me, need my, my, the words are gonna come, coming them. out of my mouth are going to choke me. But I don't think we have enough governmental officials to actually process everybody. So if we do want to start yes. spending more money and we want to get more people into the workplace and we want to be fair, that's a place we can spend money. All right, let's go ahead and move on here to something else the Supreme Court is doing these days. Ruling that felons, this is interesting, convicted felons may be able to transfer their guns to someone else rather than surrendering them to authorities. This is siding with a former U.S. Border Patrol agent from Florida convicted on marijuana charges. Uh, hang on a sec here, Steve. Let's see. Felon transfer the guns to anybody else that they want here. What kind of madness is this? I have no problem with it. It's his property. But wait you're a minute, you're about I think a first of all, it depends on the kind of felony. Anybody? I think it depends on the kind of felony that you've been convicted of, and obviously, wait a minute, a you can't a felony, transfer. Steve. Well, there's violent felonies. There's there's a felony. Uh, you know, if I was an embezzler, that would be a felony as well. So, and it has nothing to do with owning a gun. I think that uh, obviously you can't transfer it to somebody else who's a convicted felon. I would have an issue with that. But basically, it's your property. All right. And normally the court Ellis? gives you some time to get your life in order, to get your affairs in order. You can sell your house. You can sell your car. You can sell your clothing. A gun is a possession. Why wouldn't you be able to sell it? Guns as long a as you do it within the confines You'll of the law. You'll have to agree with that. Ellis, your, your take on this? I just, it's pathetic. I, I mean, my God, this is what we're worried about? I mean, we got so many guns, ridiculous refusal to have any reasonable regulation of the crazy weapons that people have, any number, no training, no nothing. 
And you worried about that? My goodness. All right. Not necessarily worried about it, but do you think it's a good idea? It's ridiculous. No, it's not a good idea. That's what I, that's what what, I thought. Morris, I, what are you supposed to do with it? Why not? It's his property. All right. Well, turn it. I mean, if listen, it hasn't been used in the, the commission, of, if the gun hasn't been used in the commission of the, the crime, c- what's the issue? You know what? Okay, so let, let's let's agree with this. Maybe we'll let the felons vote, which we really ought to be doing. I don't know why they have to lose their votes. But you 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 willing to give up their right to vote, but not their right to sell their guns? Well, not even Something's sell their guns. This is just here. a straight transfer, indeed. All right, we got about a minute left. Let's go to something else. Let's just go to something bad. else that will affect everybody here. Motorists are now texting, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. We've got 27% of drivers between 16 to 65 report using Facebook while they're driving. Look, guys, I tell you what. How about this? When a cop rolls by somebody, if they see you looking at a, looking at something while you are in motion, they get to stop you and give you a ticket. What do you think, Steve? Well, I think you should get more than a ticket. I, I think you should be sent home to your parents and spanked. Well, what happens I mean, if you're over 18 years idiotic. of age? It's stupid. It is just people who do that are flat out morons. We should have a moron jail where you go to jail for a certain a few hours just because you're stupid. How about it, Ellis? So if a cop is actually moving, you're at speed, you got your head buried in the phone and you're texting, shouldn't they be able to stop you because they see you in the commission of this and give you a ticket something? I think that's true in most states today, isn't it? It's I, not. I, mean, I know in no, New York in and some, Louisiana, they, the two in I know. In some states, if they stop most you states, for something else. you're not allowed else. to text and drive. Well, but in some states, if they well, stop you li- for something else, they can then ticket you for that, but yeah. they can't stop you it's, just listen, for the texting. As you know, it's hard to catch, but yeah, you should not be driving and doing anything else, including ladies doing your nails. Please don't do that either. Yeah, let's not do that either. Guys, don't do your hair either. It's or not gentlemen, really don't do your nails. No, See, I, there I, you don't go. Do your nails. Being on the phone, eating a hot dog while you're texting is a little tough to drive at the same time. Oh, know? I see you've been on Florida roads before. I have, actually. Gentlemen, a pleasure. Steve McFarland, Ellis Hennigan, thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you. All right, take care. Stay with us. Spanning the Globe deals with Mother Nature when we come back right here on Midpoint.